All right, guys, so I've been working on a new uh, little VSL campaign, trying to make the biggest VSL campaign of my life, so we'll get into it. So uh, over the past couple of days, I realized a little marketing lie that I think a lot of people have been told. I believe for a long time, but the lie is that the riches are in the niches. Uh, the truth is that master marketing campaigns are created with universal offers. The mechanism is their first funnel approach. So yesterday I was working through the VSL template um, with one of my clients and I realized that the typical like funnel, right? Top of funnel, middle funnel, bottom funnel um, isn't really the best way to go about marketing campaigns. So what people will say is like the riches are in the niches, make your offer super specific, make your messaging super specific, but then you're trying to break through a lot of noise with a really tight message. And I look at a lot of coaches and I look at a lot of failed offers that don't ever get off the ground. And the reason is, is they can't go broad enough to reach enough people because their offer is so specific, the messaging is so specific, and it's really hard to break into kind of that crowded market with their unique mechanism. So um, typical funnel, right? You have 100 people go in, they go through the top of funnel, broad ad campaign. And even if it's a specific broad ad or a specific mechanism, it's still, you know, you're going after this wider audience, um, entrepreneurs that are struggling with, you know, creating compelling VSLs. They go through the middle of funnel, which is kind of like the VSL. And then they come out to the conversion process. So you get a hundred in, three out, a hundred in, one out, whatever it could be. But it ends up being a really expensive marketing campaign that isn't super scalable and generally requires a lot of high touch points. So I started looking at a different mechanism, which would be like the reverse funnel. And as I started going through this, I realized that if you break your top of funnel into different hooks, right? So this would be like hook one, hook two, hook three, hook four. These would all be targeted at different audiences. So audience one, audience two, audience three, audience four. Each one of those are gonna have a specific set of problems. How I've been usually doing it is breaking them into income and um, psychographics. So if I take the income and the psychographics, usually I can get a good audience. It's gonna to reply to a good hook. And then that's gonna be the ads. So my ads are gonna be pretty specific to these bucketed audiences. And then I'm going to go into these leads. So this would be like L1 and L2. And generally what I found is I can combine two of the audiences into one lead. Um, and even if that lead has a different hook or a little bit different of a variation, for the most part, I can take these two hooks or these two audiences and put them into this one lead. And then from that, these two leads, and that's usually going to be in the form of like a VSL, right? Then they can go into this bottom of funnel, which is the offer. And what I started to realize was most of these mass, like monster marketing campaigns like Mind Valley, uh, Prodentum, or a lot of these other products that are running on ClickBank and affiliate market um, marketplaces that are doing really well, they have a very evergreen offer that actually applies to a wide array of audiences. And in the reality, like most money making offers, most fitness offers, most beauty offers like um, V Shreds and all these other people. They have these really evergreen offers that apply to very large segments of the audience. And then what they do is they have a bunch of different top of funnel approaches. They go through the bottom of funnel or middle funnel, then they go to the bottom of funnel. And that's where you can really make a lot of money. And the cool thing is, well, like one of the really unique things is by doing this, um, you have this really unique opportunity on the back end to monetize based on the advanced segmentation that you get from the front end, which can be really helpful. So like in here, I have a back end, um, I have a back end one, which is going to be like a lower price point. I have a back end two, which is going to be a middle price point, back end three, which is going to be a highest price point. And you can see that I'm able to achieve those segmentations based on the um, income and psychographic breakdown there. So I'm going to get a higher conversion rate. I'm going to get cheaper traffic. I'm going to get more specific audiences that I can actually use audience targeting, which will make my media buying a little bit less programmatic. And I can kind of growth hack some of the ways that I want to get quick results. From there, I can start to test the audiences and see where there's not a fall off or where, or where there is a fall off or there's not alignment. And I can quickly kill those hooks and modify without having to redo the VSL and offer. Because what I see is a lot of times people say, oh shit, your offer's not working, your VSL isn't working, now you have to redo it. Well, the problem with that is this is really heavy lift. So if I can take the top of funnel, which is usually the lightest lift, right? This is gonna be a 30 second to five minute ad that's going to be really easy to modify. And at the end of the day, really, your hook is going to be the first three to nine seconds. So if I have a good hole rate on my ad, but I have a low hook rate, then what I can do is I can just modify the very upfront part of the ad. It's going to be a lot easier lift. And in reality, when I write an ad script, I already write it with three to five to 10 hooks. So this part's already done. We can filter that in without having to redo any shoots. This part becomes really easy because it's three, you know, 30 seconds to five minutes. And then what I can do is I can start to check it 
against my VSL, which is going to be 30 to 60 minutes. Now, this is going to be the biggest, or this is going to be the second hardest piece to modify. So in reality, if I can make this a little bit broader and the story really compelling, and I can bolt in stories that bring this person in, this person in, this person into this one, this person into this one, and I can use the unique mechanism that's um, talked about in this offer with the stories in those two leads, I can start to bridge the audiences together. And that's been really beneficial. Um, and then the cool thing is, like I said, you have this back end mechanism that's already has a, has a solid segmentation. A really good way to do that is if you do a quiz funnel, um, this can be a good way for segmentation. You can also just look at the um, segmentation source, right? So what ad they came in, um, segmentation which ad they came into um, and I can use that, you know, use that attribution mechanism. But the cool thing is what it's doing is it's gonna create higher conversions with um, the upfront <clears throat> ad angles and opt-ins and conversion rate. <clears throat> I'm gonna be able to optimize my traffic a lot better because I can get a little bit more niche down around which audiences I wanna go after. Actually, one of the ad campaigns we just launched that's coming out of gate the best with like a 2.6 rows after day two um, we're doing a little bit more traffic optimization than just super programmatic, broad targeting audiences. And we've been able to get results a lot faster, which is beneficial. But now you can't really do that when you're running these super, you know, a lot of times people are just going after like hyper create, hyper targeted creatives and letting the creatives do all the targeting. But if you create these uh, specific hooks that are based around different audiences, psychographics and income, then you can get a bit, little bit more granular with your media buying. You get this advanced segmentation, which is nice for like lifetime monetization. And then you get uh, higher conversion rates on the back end. So, you know, a big lift is writing these like long nurture sequences and building out these back end offers. So if you build these back end offers out based on the next, you know, usually they come in with a problem. Your upfront offer solves their problem and then opens up another problem. Then your um, back end solves that problem. Right. So it's a little bit easier to predict what the back end offer is going to be. But the biggest lift that I've always tried to modify was this offer. And in reality, the offer is the hardest piece to modify. So if I can make, if I can look at this on a reverse angle and I can say, all right, what's the hardest to modify? Well, it's the offer. Next hardest is going to be the VSL. Easiest is going to be the ad. Well, how can I use a funnel that's going to allow me to optimize my ads? to drive into something that I already know is going to work and help a lot of people. I just have to find the way that I can convince the audience to come into that. So that's kind of this little reverse funnel approach. And the way that I've applied it to this VSL structure, um, basically how I break it in, how I break it down is I have six different key pieces to the marketing campaign. So I have my strategy, my ad, my audience, my angle, my hook, and my lead. So strategy for this one specifically is going to be a quiz. Now, the cool thing is my VSL, my VSLs actually apply to, I can have strategy one, strategy two, strategy three. So how I write my strategies and then the quiz funnel and in the hooks, the ads, I make it where each one of these will apply to the singular VSL. So I don't have to worry about redoing a lot of this, but this specific uh, VSL campaign is going to be strategy one is going to be a quiz. Um, strategy two is going to be short form. Um, so this will be a 30 second to five minute VSL um, to a master class, master class. The master class is going to be a 50 to 60 minute VSL. And then that's going to go to checkout plus one time offer. Uh, number one plus OTO. Number two, the reason I build it like this is we can increase our AOV because if we can buy traffic more expensively, we can recruit more affiliates and the most you can pay for a customer, the more customers you're going to be able to acquire. And then strategy number three is going to be long form. Um, so this will actually be the same VSL as the masterclass. So masterclass on platform. So this will be YouTube meta and that will go that will go directly to checkout and it'll be the same checkout stat. Now this quiz will go to the long form VSL to checkout. Now the cool thing is if you look at this, it looks like I'm actually having to build a ton of different assets, but I'm having to build a quiz, a short form, 
um, funnel, like a, or a short form assets, which go to the masterclass landing page. So this is one asset. Um, this is one. And then uh, the 60 minute VS and then the short form is going to be an asset stack. And then I have my long form, long form, long form. That's all going to be the same VSL. And then if you look out my checkout stack, I'm able to use the same checkout stack right there. Right. So I'm all, I'm kind of decreasing the amount of assets that I have to build. So I have to build my quiz. I have to build my short form. I have to build my, um, well, the, this little masterclass landing page. And then I have all the others. So I have my, let's go back through that. I have my quiz, my short form, my, um, check out my, and this is in great order, my long form. And then I guess I have my, where's my yellow? Um, yeah. So able to just leverage these five assets to build three different strategies with a bunch of different variations within them. That's really beneficial. Um, so I have my quiz and then I have my add one, I have my add two, I have my add three, I have my add four, my, I have my add five. Then I go to my strategy, which is going to be the quiz or it would be the short form or it would be the long form. This is kind of what my quiz flow looks like through each one of these. I get my granular um, results and that's going to go to average person or audience one, audience two, audience three. And then in each one of those audiences, I have hook one, hook two, hook three, hook one, hook two, hook three, hook one, hook two, hook three. Then I have usually I'll test two different leads. So lead one and lead two, lead two in um, lead 2.1, lead 2.2, lead 3.1, lead 3.2. And then in reality, what I've done is I've created a bunch of different stacks for each angle, right? So without having to redo a whole lot of work, because all of this will go to body one VSL, this will go to body two VSL, and then this will go to body three VSL. So by just creating three main VSLs, I can test these nine different leads or three different leads per VSL and then three different hooks per lead. So I could have what's that nine, 12 variations of a VSL with just a very minimal amount of work. So it's kind of the way that I'm working through creating massively scalable campaigns because the biggest thing with shooting these long form VSLs is when you do this, it's a, a pretty big lift is on the VSL. So if I can schedule one shoot date, that's eight to 12 hours and we can record all the content and I can have 12 to 15 to 24 assets to test, what's the probability of failure? Well, it's really minimized because if five, you know, you look at some of the top VSL people and it's like, if five out of 25 of their VSLs work, well, that's fine because if I'm shooting five different VSL angles, or if I have 25 different assets and let's say even two of them work, well, that creates a really scalable, profitable way for me to start running. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like this really interesting way that I've started to reverse engineer the typical funnel to this reverse funnel, change some of the traditional marketing models on the head, how I can leverage more assets in a short period of time. I pretty much guarantee the success of my campaign.